It's the final week of my great escape. It's two days till my 30th birthday and I'm celebrating it on the Amalfi Coast where me and Jules spent our honeymoon. I feel older, thrashed, ready to become 30. But I've got to get there first. Just conked out about this all really I can do about it. There's a small fragment of like, looks like aluminium. Presumably if I've joined the gap between the bit of metal and the... After 3,000 miles and a whole load of grief, my 50-year-old van has finally packed up. I think it's the, the, spark, the spark plug caps are loose, so they're wobbling, they're not making contact, so I'm probably only running on two cylinders. But there's f all really I can do about it. I'm just 200 miles from the Amalfi Coast. I've never really liked birthdays. Maybe the van's trying to tell me something. Buongiorno! I don't feel emotional, I'm just pissed off. It's a sh in it. Oh, don't forget me dick chair. At times like these, I really miss Jules and the kids. Hello. Hi, babe. I've just broken down. Daddy's van broken down. Hi, hi. No, I'll just... Is that a puppy? Can I say hello? Too. I'm not sure if Jules is coming over because of the kids and stuff like that. And, um, I don't think any of my family are coming either. It's not quite the entrance I want. F***ing van, you f***ing piece of 1950s I f***ing hate this van. Romance is over. Piece of shit. Piece of shit. ancient. Shit. Today is the last day of my twenties. I've got a big party to cook for tomorrow, and I'm still trying to get out of Jules whether she's coming or not. Let me speak to Poppy. I want to get the truth out of Poppy. <laughs> Poppy. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to come and surprise Daddy in Italy? Good girl. So is her tooth all right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. She fell over and hit her tooth. So it's going to... They say it might go black. Yeah. Um, all right, well, look, I'll, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Jamie, I am not coming. Look, I'm never, ever going to surprise you again, because you know what? Now I feel so bad now. I know, you but you surprise me so you surprise me so often. I never know when you're going to surprise me. Well, this is why it's quite good that I'm not going to surprise you. Now you know that I sometimes let me just surprise you a surprise. Oh, uh, all right then. I'll see you tomorrow. So, Jamie. Yeah. I am not coming. I still think she's going to turn up. I'm 30 today, and guess what? I'm up early shopping for my own party. Still no sign of Jules and the girls. Thank you. Big kiss for your girls. Pleasure. Thank Three you. Three of them. Three of them. Yeah, including the wife. To be honest, I'm a bit anxious about cooking tonight. I've invited all of the Italians that I've met along the way, and they've been pretty hard to please so far. Can't be bothered to make cake tonight. I just want to drink and have food. <laughs> Hello, my name's Billy No Mates. I'll cook me a cake. Happy birthday to me. Out of the way. <laughs> I've borrowed this derelict paper mill for my party. Oh, Antonio! <laughs> This is like Steptoe and Son. It's rustic, it's falling apart. It's a bit like me. I've had my best 30 years, haven't I? Dove la cucina? Jules has rung again to say that she really can't make it. But that's all right, we can celebrate tomorrow. It's just too much hassle with the two kids and getting over here, and the planes apparently aren't working at the moment because there's baggage strikes on. So like, I don't think there's many people getting in or out of Naples, to say the truth. I'm gutted. But with everyone coming in three hours, I've got to get a move on. Tonight, I'm cooking my favourite Italian party food. And for main course, porchetta, a delicious slow roast pork using the loin with the belly left on. Your butcher will do this for you. Hey! 
So that is the biggest bit of pork scratchings you've ever seen in your life. You've got a handbag out of that, look. We're going to roll it with beautiful things in it. Plenty, plenty rosemary. There's a little bit of fennel there. Fennel and pork are like the best friends ever. A little bit of mint. Got a little bit of garlic. Pepperoncino. Chop them up fine. And because I'm in a mouthy, I'm using a little bit of lemon zest. Um, this is probably not in there, porchetta, but lemon works so well with pork. OK, so look, there we go. And that is our flavour. After generous seasoning of sea salt and pepper, I'm going to sprinkle on those herbs with a good lug of olive oil. What I have to do is fold it. What a lovely sort of celebration dish. Double knots. All right, that goes in the oven. It ain't going to be ready till 8 o'clock. People are arriving at 6. So I'm already behind big time. But anyway, it's my birthday. The last thing I should be doing is worrying. I want to make it look really Italian. I've got these little planks of wood I put paper on. I'm going to cover them in lemon leaves, all right? And I'm going to somehow get a couple of bricks or something and put this up so it's about 6 inches, 7 inches up. Then all the prosciutto and antipasti is going to be on top. It's going to look great. Anything flat, Andy? Looks more like a war zone. I'm trying to make this place look pretty. Oh, Massimo! Antonio! Oh, thank you for inviting. Hey. Thank you for coming. Ciao! Oh! Oh, we can use this tonight. Grazie mille. I'm pretty confident that these hunting boys are going to love my porchetta. I've seen this dish all over Italy. If they don't like that, f it. I'm going home, I'm never coming back again. Because you know what? I'll cut my own bollocks off and give up cooking. That, that's a proper good dish. For the pasta course, I'm making an amazing seafood sauce. I'm putting some bream and some red mullet in with some garlic and chilli and frying it off before adding some lovely fresh tomato sauce. And then at the last minute, we're going to throw in vongole, prawns, mussels, lovely fusilli. I'm putting everything I've got into this. I'm trying to be bold with my flavours. Cinnamon, fennel seeds, chilli, a little something I learnt from Giovanni, the fisherman in the Sicilian islands. He told me I'd never crack Italian cooking until I learnt to have a little bit more fun. <laughs> oh! oh! Giovanni! Yay! Oh, what, what is it? Corallo. Molto gentile. Grazie. And Beppe and his family of bakers from Puglia. Jesus, for me? <laughs> yeah, for you. Oh, you're too generous, man. I think they're going to love the antipasti because it's so simple. Those mozzarella and basil filled lemons came out to perfection. There's all sorts of different grilled and marinated vegetables. Beautiful. Salute! Manja, everyone, manja! Oh, buona. Molto buona. Super. Romante buona. Result! My food's finally put a smile on Giovanni's face. Look how tender that meat is. Tiny bit of grilled radicchio. Now, be cooking better than the, than the market. I yes. don't believe it. I don't believe it because in Puglia, Jamie's was good cook. Yeah, but before, stay in the market, you know? Yeah. There you go, Italians doing what they do best, arguing about food. There's nothing wrong with being know-it-alls, because the fact that they all know it all and they all know better just means they care. And I think the moral of the story is at least they do care. Care and pride is the thing that I take back from Italy, really. And as long as you care, and as long as you get the family around the table, that's all that matters. No English or Italian or French or whatever. It's just about cooking. And I think, you know, if anything, I think Italy's made me appreciate England a lot, actually. After sort of nearly two months of wandering about Italy, you know, I want to go home now. These are the people that have got me really excited about food again. And thank f they like it.